Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. What a crowd. Wow. Wow. This is amazing. This has been such an amazing... Go ahead. Go ahead. Let it out. Go ahead. Amazing. This has been such an amazing experience. I mean, we have a country that's in trouble, and therefore it shouldn't be fun, but it's going to be fun because we are going to bring our country back. Remember that. Remember. And we've got politicians running that don't know what they're doing. We have politicians running that are totally controlled by special interests, by lobbyists. I'm self-funding my campaign, folks. Nobody controls me. So coming down, I told a statistician, get me the numbers on this area. Thank you very much. And I love you too. It's a guy, but I love him. I love him. And I told my people, get me the numbers on the area. And I know Maryland for a long time, and I love it. I have so many friends over here. A lot of them are here today, David and my friends, my man, some very great people here. So here's what they came with. This is right out of the books, right? Few states have known Maryland's pain. Maryland has suffered because of what's going on with our country because manufacturing is down 40%, 40%, think of that, since 2001. Now that happens to be when Congress voted to put China in the World Trade Organization. Not a good idea, folks. And now we're going with TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, Cruz wants it. Kasich wants it. It's going to be worse than NAFTA. You better not approve it, folks. You'll have the rest of the jobs taken, believe me, like candy from a baby. Now, this area, Hagerstown, which we all know and love, we do love it, right? That's the good news. The bad news is your jobs are down 40%. We'll bring them back, okay? We're going to bring them back. 40%? Fellas, what are you doing? What's going on? Let's get going. Wow. But you know what? You need leadership at the top. And the top isn't treating us right. The top is allowing countries, China, Japan, many, many countries, to devalue their currency, which ma really makes it impossible for your companies to compete. Then you have Mexico and other countries where your companies are moving there. Oh, we're going to build a wall. We're going to build a wall, believe me. We're gonna build a wall. We're gonna build a wall. Believe me. Believe me, that wall's gonna get built. Wow. So look at this. Overall, nearly one in two manufacturing jobs in Maryland have disappeared since 1990. It's no good. We're gonna change it. We're gonna change it. Who needs those kind of stats? Get rid of them. I'll tell you what. If I win and if I become your president, you're going to see such a fast turn. And you know what? When companies move out of the United States and they leave Maryland and they leave all of the other places, you saw last week we had a record-setting victory in New York. That was incredible. That was incredible. All of the dishonest, look at all those cameras back there. All of the dishonest media was saying, well, he won't be able to crack 50. And you know, what they don't say, and this is something so important, I've never really wanted to talk about it because it seemed so obvious, but they never talk about it. When I started, we had 17 people, right? 17. And I'd then get on and I'd see these pundits who don't have the brains they were born with say, Yes, Donald Trump had a conclusive victory, but he didn't break 50%. You can't break 50%. Abraham Lincoln could not break 50%. When you have 16 people in the early, you had 16, then you had 14, then you had 12, then you had nine, then you had seven, you had six, you had five, now we have three, okay? Let me just tell you. So despite all of that, I'm doing really well. We're leading in delegates by a lot. We don't care about second, third, fourth battle. You know, Cruz, this guy Cruz, Lion Ted Cruz, he's a liar like you've never seen. 
He is a liar like you've never seen. And, you know, in business, I deal with tougher people than him, but I've never dealt with a person that could lie like this guy. I'm telling you. Now, he's not a good liar because he gets caught. You know, a good liar doesn't get caught. But I will tell you, you know, over the weekend and last week, my folks were meeting with the Republican National Committee, and they had a meeting. I don't know. You know, I, I said, are you... Do you want to do this? Do you want to actually go down and spend the money for an airplane ticket to go there? They went in Florida. By the way, they had boats and yachts waiting to take delegates around and everybody. Boy, these delegates. I think I want to become a delegate. I want to become. No, it's a crooked game. Folks, it's a rig system. Believe me, it's a rig. And I read, you probably read where Cruz is going and he's whining and dining and dinners and hotels and all this stuff. He's bribing people essentially to vote. Now, he can't do it in the first ballot because they're locked into me in the first ballot. But uh, that's all I care about. That's all I care about. I only care about the first. We're not going for the second and third and fourth and fifth. Now, here's, here's what I say is his problem. I think we get that 1237, I'm pretty sure. And a lot of other people are saying it. I figured, you know, they said if Trump gets 60 delegates in New York, that would be a big hit. That would be good. And if he got around 50% would be good. Anything over 50 would be amazing, which is hard to get when you have three people. Another, and, and, you know, look, I have a Senate. I have a governor. They both are statistically, mathematically, they're gone. They can't win. The only way they can win, it's like in Wall Street, they call it short sellers, right? In other words, when you bet against the world. I never liked people that go short because they're not optimistic people. I know so many short sellers, they're among the worst people you'll ever meet, almost as bad as the media. Not quite. No, nobody is, I'm not even sure if Cruz is as bad as the media, if you want to know. But what happens is a short, so Cruz is a short sell. Kasich, I still don't get that, I don't know what's, he's one for 38, he won one. And if I, if I campaigned there for two more days, I would have won Ohio. You know what happened? I was winning Florida big, and then I had a dirty poll. You know what a dirty poll is? A phony poll, because they put out phony polls. Happened to be by NBC. In my opinion, it was a phony poll. And I'll say my opinion, but I think it was a, it was a dirty, dirty poll. And I thought I was winning by like 18 points, 16 points. Then right before the election, I was going to go to Ohio, spend a couple of days there. And because I thought I had it made in Florida, the people of Florida know me. And all of a sudden, I get this poll, which, again, I didn't understand, but I didn't want to take a chance. And it had me up only six. Is that right, David? And David knows. Great, great man. Great man. I won't tell you what he's done, because some of you would like it, but most of you would, right? But so what happened is I get this poll. I say, oh, so I cancel the Ohio thing because I had to win Florida. I figured, oh, man, this is really bad. I'm really crashing in Florida. In Florida. I end up winning Florida in a landslide by like 20 points. And, and picked up all 99 delegates, 100% picked them up. Again, I'm only interested in the first ballot. I'm not interested in second, third, fourth, 19th, because I'm, I'm really interested in winning it early and that's it. But, but remember this. Wait a minute. Remember this. Think of this. So I have millions. It's called like the fighters, a knockout, you know, boom, boom, first round. And I'm not necessarily looking to fly people all over the world in a beautiful airplane, have them stay at the best hotels, wine them and dine them, sit down to have steak dinners for them so that on the fourth ballot I can win. OK, too much. No, no, I want to win. We want to put it away. We could have a really big, you got to get out there, Maryland. You got to get out there and vote. We could have a big Tuesday. We could have a big Tuesday. We could have it. But here's the thinking. So I'm millions of votes up on Cruz. Millions of votes up on Kasich. Kay, honestly, Kasich, I like Kasich. He's a nice guy. He shouldn't be running because you have many guys that were doing better than him. You know, I mean, you had Marco Rubio, you have Chris Christie, you have, you know, many guys, I guess Jeb, except he spent so damn much money. I don't know if you call it. No, I mean, he had like 168 million bucks. I'm so happy I didn't spend that. You know, I've spent the least and I'm leading in a landslide, number one. Right? Right? 
So I, I have spent the least and I'm number one. Wouldn't you rather have that for the president than somebody that just spent? Well, it's my money. And yet I'm in for about $40 million. It's not like, uh, gee, this is peanuts. But it's nice to know that the person that essentially has spent the least is in first place by a lot. But here's the thing. So I'm winning by millions and millions of votes. I'm winning by 300, almost 300 delegates. And importantly, I don't know what's going to happen on Tuesday. Oh, you got it, Marilyn. But on Tuesday, on Tuesday, I'm expected to win all five, I hope. I hope. In fact, tomorrow, all day, I'm going to Rhode Island. Yesterday, I was in Delaware. Delaware was unbelievable, the crowd we had. It was, like, incredible. You know? I went to my people, I said, how many things do I have registered in Delaware and Delaware corporations? I figured they were gonna say two or three because I see Delaware and 378. Now he could be off a little bit because I gave him like four minutes. I said, listen, I'm gonna speak at Delaware. How many things am I registered for or corporations or whatever in Delaware? Comes back like four minutes later. It's not exact, Mr. Trump, but it's about 378, I think you told me. 378, that's a big company, I'll tell you. So when I went to Delaware, I mentioned that. I said, man, I'm paying a lot of money to this state. But they're great people. We had an amazing rally. I'm going to Rhode Island, and tomorrow, I'm spending a lot of time. We're gonna have some incredible rallies in Pennsylvania. But, but here's, here's where the system is, just, it's just no good. And you know, I brought it out. Because for years you heard about delegates, delegates, nobody knew what it meant, delegates, delegates, you know, nobody knew. And it started for me with, with uh, Louisiana. I went to Louisiana, I was supposed to lose, I was supposed to lose the entire South, right? And then what happened is I won the entire South. Yeah. In a landslide. Alabama, Arkansas, we won Kentucky, we won Florida, we won everything, in massive numbers, okay? Alabama was unbelievable, we won like, a, in fact, if I don't get the vote from Maryland, I'm moving to Alabama. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So what happens, so what happens is this. So I win all these states and they said the evangelicals, you know, Cruz has evangelicals, but then they found out he's a liar and they stopped voting for him. You know, they don't like liars, right? The Bible high, the Bible high. We put the Bible way up high. You put it down and then you lie. They don't like him. He's a liar. And I have, I have Jerry Falwell Jr. I have so many people that have, that's Liberty University, an incredible guy, Jerry Falwell Jr. We have so much support from ministers and pastors and everything else. So we did great, we did great. Look, she's more impressed with that than anything I've said, I have a press. So what happens is I say, I just read an article that Cruz is working really hard to, I don't want to use the word bribe, but to bribe <laughs> the delegates from all over the place on the second bout, the third bout, the fourth bout. I don't want it ever to get, we're not working that at all. We're only interested in the first bout because we should win it. But here's the thing. Let's assume it got to a second ballot. So here you are and we have this convention. Everybody's all excited. People are screaming and it goes to a second ballot. The man that worked really hard, the man that's been on Time Magazine cover with you, not me, I'm just the messenger, folks. It's a movement, okay? It's a movement. I mean, Bill O'Reilly, good guy, tough guy, very smart, and Fox the other night said that what's happened with Donald Trump, which is us, all of us together, is the most, no, but he said this, and he said this strongly, is the most significant, essentially, political event of his lifetime. Think of that. Think of that. So, I mean, we're not playing games. And many people have said it. Because just like this, I mean, we set this up a couple of days ago. We have a massive hangar that's filled. Look at it, it's filled to the back corners. Um, I want to thank the fire marshal. Where's the fire marshal? I want to thank him. You know, some of these fire marshals can be tough. You know, they can be tough. But uh, we have a good one over here, I want to tell you. But, but when you think of it, so let's say it does go to a second or third or fourth bout. So I go in and I say, hey, look, what do I know? I have millions more votes. I don't mean like, you know, I win by two votes. I'm winning by millions and millions of votes. Look at New York. 
I have millions of votes. I'm going to win New York. I'm going to win Maryland. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Oh, but think of it. I'm talking general. I'm going to win Michigan. I'm going to win states that no other Republican is going to even go and campaign in. It's true. I'm going to win. And, you know, I get a kick out of Kasich and Cruz. They go, well, actually, Cruz loses to Hillary badly. But Kasich is winning a little bit by Hillary, right? So his whole thing is, I beat Hillary Clinton in the general. Here's the problem. He hasn't had one negative ad against him. And as soon as they give him a couple of negative ads, he's going to drop like a rock post. I've had 55,000 negative ads. True story. Has to be true. I saw it on Fox. I've had legitimately. And by the way, you know, if it's not true, you know, tomorrow it's a headline, right? Trump said this. I have to be very careful. I always said I wrote The Art of the Deal, the biggest, best-selling business book of all time. And now I always say, well, I think it's probably one of the best. Uh, you got to be. But I think it's the biggest of all time. But rather than getting into, I say one of the biggest of all time. But I do think it's probably the biggest of all time. Anyway, but here's the thing. So he goes and he gets all these delegates, lots of dinners. I want to see what the cost of hotels and food and everything else is for Cruz. OK, I want to see it because it's astronomical. But he gets for the second. It's it's I'm telling you, it's so negative. Gets for the second, gets for the third, gets some good publicity, getting the delegates. But we're never going to get there. He's not taking any first round delegates. We're not going to get there. But wh how does it look? OK, we go to a second round, second ballot. Thank you, man. Thank you. Look at this nice kid. Young kid, a lot of energy. A lot of energy. He's got a lot more energy than other people I know. A lot of energy. So we go to a second round. We go to a second round. Trump has millions of votes more by that time, because you look, you know, on Tuesday, it looks like five. I mean, I don't know, but I believe in polls, I, you know, to be honest. So let's say we win five. We win all five states. We pick up a lot. Now it's an unfair, unfair thing because I'm way up in Pennsylvania. But in Pennsylvania, I think you get 17 delegates and the rest you have to negotiate for. What is this? What's going on? It's really an unfair system. But here's the story. So I'm leading by millions of votes. Uh, by that time, I'll be 500, 600 delegates ahead. And maybe I'll be 25 people, 25 short. But remember, the 25, remember this, nobody ever talks about it. The 25 short. When I started, we had the 17, I told you. And then we had 60, then we had, I was never going one-on-one. -on -one. I didn't have Hillary where you have, you know, communist Bernie Sanders doing it. It's, here's the thing, it's crooked Hillary Clinton against the communists. Who the hell, I mean, this guy's crazy. This guy's crazy. Crazy. I mean, you can say he's a socialist, but he wants to raise your taxes by like a hundred. He wants to take a hundred percent of what you make. He wants to give free education, free this, free that, whatever you want, you can have. And I'll tell you, when you look at his tax return, that's why he made so little, I guess. I don't know who the hell knows. But you look at him and you look at her and I'll be honest, I'm so happy she's going to win because I really want to fight Hillary. I really do. I want to fight Hillary. I don't know if she'll be easier or harder, but that's the one I want to beat. They actually said, they came out with a poll recently, an election between crooked Hillary and wonderful Donald. It'll be the biggest, most incredible vote-getting election in the history of our country. There will be... There will be more voters turn out for that election than any election by far in the history of our country. Now, think of this. When we did the debates, right? Who knew about debates? I love the debates. It turned out I'm good at debating, I guess. I won all the debates. Every poll, Drudge and Time Magazine and Slate and everyone that did said we won every single debate from every single source of whatever. And these are hundreds of thousands of, of people that are voting. So we've liked the debates, but think of this. Trump versus Hillary. That will be so much fun. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Remember this. I watch these guys saying, 
Well, Trump is, a, first of all, I do beat her in various polls, but that doesn't matter. Because I started off with all of these senators and governors, these powerful people, the top of the line, the best we have in the country, and great people, including Chris Christie, who endorsed me, and Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, who endorsed me. It's great guys, two great guys, and they have been so incredible and so helpful. And there'll be others endorsing me soon. I mean, there'll be a lot. A lot of people are endorsing me. But think of it. So then say, well, Donald Trump, I haven't even focused on Hillary. I haven't even thought about her other than two months ago when I hit her hard. She went like this and I got no credit for it. They said Bernie's doing well. But somebody said on television today, wait a minute, wait a minute. The last person she wants to run against is Donald Trump. He started off. They all said, well, he's just having a good time. He's having fun. I like this, but I can think of other things I'd rather be doing right now. You can too. That's why I love you. You're here on a Sunday afternoon. You could be at other places. Now, this country's amazing. I mean, in Alabama, 35,000 people. Thank you. So... So they talk about changing personality and president. I think I look real good. I mean, I think I look like a president. You mean, you mean Kasich looks better than Trump? I think a lot of people would disagree with that. Cruz, Cruz, you think Lion Ted is better? But here, here's the thing. So I started off and we had all of these people. Then one by one, I knock them out, knock them out, knock. And believe me, I knocked them out. Nobody else knocked them out. And these are all nice people. You know, once I defeat them, I like every one of them. While I'm fighting, I'm not. Like right now, I don't like Lion Ted Cruz. But you know what? In about four or five weeks from now, I think he's going to be one of my best friends. I mean, that's the way I work. That's the way I work. And you know what's interesting is I'm getting calls right now, and so is my staff. We have a great staff. We have a great staff. Nice. Oh, that's so beautiful. I don't, I don't like the plane, but that's okay. I have a nice day. But here's what's going to happen. And here's what they said today on television. One of the smart pundits said, wait a minute. Why would Trump change? I, I'll change. I'll do whatever. It's so much easier to be presidential because I don't have to use any energy. You know, I can just walk out. It's so much easier. You think this is easy? Ranting and raving. I got to entertain 18,000, whatever the hell number of people we have here. Look, look. Look, so I started off, and this person said today, uh, uh, very smart, said, wait a minute, why would he change? Starts off with 17 people, and one by one, Governor Walker, highly respected, he's gone. Jeb Bush, oh, he can't be beaten, he's got the Bush name, he's got $168 million in his thing, bomb, low energy, he's gone, okay? I mean, all of them, all of them. I mean, you look at them, good people, Marco's a good guy, a lot of good people. See the way I like people after defeat. But Marco is good. We got a lot of good people. Defeated, 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 everybody. Okay? And here I am. Here I am. I'm standing with you people. I'm standing with you. And this person said, who is a, one of the smart pundits, of which there aren't too many, because most of them said he's never going to run. And then I ran. Then he said, he'll never sign Form A, which is where you sign your life away. And then I did that. Then they said, he'll never put in his financials. And I put him in ahead of schedule. And it was much bigger. I mean, the company is phenomenal. Or you would have been reading about it all over the place, folks. Believe me. In fact, a friend of mine, a very rich friend of mine called, said, now I know you're rich. Because you got to actually give your financials. And if you're not rich, you wouldn't be running, okay? I have built one of the great companies. I started off with a million-dollar loan. And I paid it back, a million dollar loan, and I built it into $10 million. Ten, think of this, $10 billion of net worth in a fairly short period of time. So I take a million, turn it into 10 billion, some of the great assets of the world, very little debt, great cash flow, and who cares? Except that's the kind of thinking that our country needs at least for a little while. So they're talking about running. And this person said, wait a minute. He's against all of these professional politicians. He's been doing this for nine months at the time. Nine months. Now it's actually 10 months. So he's been doing it for nine months, they said. 
And he's meeting all of them, one after another, every week. Another one gone, another one gone, another. And they said, just out of curiosity, why would he change, right? Why? Wouldn't it be interesting if I changed and everyone said, this is the most presidential candidate since Abraham Lincoln, and then we started to lose. Wouldn't that be terrible, okay? So we got to be a little bit careful about changing, folks. We got to be a little bit careful. But here's, here's the thing. We are against many candidates. Nobody's ever had, in the history of parties, nobody is there. I love the sound of those engines, but it means oil. It means fuel, but at least now it's down at a pretty low point, right? So nobody has ever had so many candidates. So when they say, I watched one of the pundits, Charles Krauthammer, who hammers me, although I heard, I heard the other day he was really, really positive, so I'm not going to say anything bad about him. But when he said he isn't attaining 50%, you know, of states. You can't when you have eight, nine, 10 people. And don't forget, these things average out. So when in a long time ago, New Hampshire, I won it. I won it big. I wasn't supposed to, I love New Hampshire. It was my first victory. I won New Hampshire big. I won South Carolina big, big, big. And Nikki Haley was against me. It turned out to be an asset because she's very weak on borders, okay? So that turned out to be a big asset. The lieutenant governor was for me, okay. So I won, I won South Carolina big. I won, then I went to the South. I won everything. I won Nevada. And in Nevada, they did a poll of the Hispanics coming out. I won the Hispanics because they want to see jobs come back for the country. But here's the thing. When you have, when you have all of these candidates, now I'm getting very close to 50%. And that's averaging for all of these things where I had all of these people and nobody ever says it. And even now we have three people. I have a governor, I have a senator. And to win and to get over 50%. So they all thought I couldn't do it because statistically it's hard to get over 50% when you have three people. If you got 42%, you're doing great, right? I got almost 62%. Almost 62%. 95 delegates. Now in Florida, I won 100%. In New York, I won almost 100% of the delegates. I mean, it's not final yet. I think it's going to end up being 91, 92. Almost, like almost all of them, right? Almost all of them. And think of it, with three candidates, I end up getting almost 62%. It's amazing, right? It's amazing. But at least now we're down to three. But where I'm competing and where it's unfair to say that you need the 1237. And I think I'm gonna get there. So I'm not complaining about it, although I am. I am. <laughs> is, it's very hard to get to the 1237, which is half plus one, when you had all of these people running for office. And you know what? They're accomplished people. Whether you like them or not, they're all governors, senators. You had a lot of people running. And you, like Ben, he's a very, you know, tough guy and it competed better than almost everybody. I mean, frankly, Ben could have stayed in. I'll tell you, Rubio could have stayed in. Bush could have stayed in. They could have stayed and just drifted along and just like, like Kasich is. I don't quite get what Kasich is doing. And some people say that's good for me. I don't happen to think so. Because if you think about it, if he wasn't in the race in New York, I would have had, let's say, 90%. Because, you know, because Cruz died in New York. He just, he, can you imagine? But here's the thing. So let's say, so he's going around, he's buying all these delegates, he's getting all these delegates in the second, third, fourth. I don't care about them. I only care about the first. I want to get there. I don't want to have. But can you imagine if he ever, if we ever did get there and he won, and yet the guy that he was competing against beat him by millions and millions of votes. And I know one thing, none of you are going to show up to vote for him because he would, you know, forget it. Forget it. And I don't want his endorsement. You know, somebody said, don't you want his endorsement? Honestly, I don't care. I want your endorsement, okay? I want you. I don't care. I don't care. There are a couple of people. I, I don't even want their endorsement because it's so phony. Did you ever see with these politicians? I've watched it all my life. They fight like hell for six months and they're saying horrible things, the worst things you can imagine. And you say, and then one of them loses, one of them wins, they go. And the one that loses, I just want to congratulate my opponent on, f he is a brilliant man. He will be a great governor or president or whatever. I'm not sure that you're ever gonna see me there. I don't think I'm gonna lose, but if I do, I'm not sure you're ever gonna see me again, folks, okay? I think I'll go to Turnberry and play golf or do something. But you know, do you ever watch that though? Seriously, they, they're the most vicious, vicious fighting. 
And then the one that loses gets up and says, and the one that wins gets up and says, it was a brilliant fight. He's a wonderful man. Half the times they put him in the administration, this is the way they get rid of him. Let me tell you, folks, it's a phony business, this politics. It's a phony, phony business. And you remember, and, and we brought in millions and millions of people. The hottest story, and David can tell you that, the hottest story that there is in all of politics worldwide is what's happened with the Republican Party. Because four years ago, when Mitt Romney choked and he lost an election that he should have won, he choked like a dog. He choked, he was going, oh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. How about that third debate? He was going, I can't breathe. <laughs> Mr. President, you're wonderful. You did a wonderful job. And then they criticize, right? He choked like a dog. That was an election that should have been won. But four years ago, just remember this. I don't think I'll get his endorsement. I don't want it. I don't care. <laughs> Listen to this. Four years ago, four years ago, we're up almost 70 some odd percent in people that are voting now in Republican primaries. That's because of me. They're all in. No, it is. I mean, it's they voted. And there's not a party in the world that can say it. Somebody who says it's the hottest in the world. That's why O'Reilly made the statement. That's why I'm on the cover of Time Magazine a lot with you. We had one. In fact, there's one where I'm standing like this and there's this massive crowd in front of me. And it's a shot, right? Time Magazine. From the back. And I said, I do have pretty good hair. I mean, actually, I do have pretty good hair. No, no ball spot. Okay. But, but you know what? It was like an amazing photo. Thousands of people out there. We brought in Millions, not thousands, we brought in millions. We brought in millions of people to the Republican Party. And those people are independents, they're Democrats. You know, one thing happened in New York that was amazing. It was on one of the stations, one of the local stations. They went to interview the people that work the voting booths. And it was a woman that's done it for 25 years, about 65 years old, great woman. And they say, how's it going? She said, I have never seen anything like it. Now, in New York, they can't switch. So when you go in, when you're a Democrat, you can't, you have to go in and vote Democrat or you have to vote Republican, right? A lot of places you can turn over and you can switch. You can cross over. She said, and there were three of them. They interviewed three. She said, I've been doing this for 25 years. Another one said, I've been doing it for 35 years. They said the same thing. In all the years that I've been doing it, I've never had a situation where so many people that are registered Democrats came in and they said, we want to vote Republican, how do I do it? Now, they're not allowed to do it in New York. They're not allowed to do that. It. it takes a year and all that. But she said, I've never seen, by the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, she said, people were coming in and they want to vote for Trump. I mean, you know, they wanted to switch, they wanted to vote for Trump. So, we are going to get, when I can pinpoint Hillary, I gotta get rid of these two guys, I'm sorry, folks. When we pinpoint, we will beat her so badly. And remember this, I think, I'll, I think we're going to win in New York. We're going to win in Michigan. Remember, we're going to win in areas that nobody can even think of. But the one thing I want you to leave here with, the main thing is on Tuesday you have to vote. Then we're going to talk about jobs for a second, and then we're getting the hell out of here, right? But, but let, me just, let me just tell you. The one thing I want you to remember, when you see here that Trump is doing really well, we'll build the wall. Don't worry. We'll talk about the wall in two seconds. Don't worry. I can't, how can I build the wall if you don't vote for him? We got to talk about first things first. So here's the thing, here's the thing. You got to remember this, so important, so important. When you hear about the 50% and the four, he got 43% and there were six people and just remember, the numbers we have are astronomical, but nobody ever mentions all of these people that have been in the race and they finally almost all dropped out. But even now with the three, it's always hard to get. But despite that, we're doing great. And a lot of the polls in the five states that we're going against on Tuesday, a lot of them have me over and substantially over. Pennsylvania's looking great. Rhode Island's looking great. They're all looking great. Maryland is looking fantastic, actually. So, so just remember, because the pundits never talk about it, they never say it, and a lot of people forget. They don't know. But just remember, the numbers are unbelievable. And you can't give an election to a guy that goes around, picks up delegates, and he's number two, 
if we didn't make it, we're going to make it. I don't want to be negative. We're going to make it. We're gonna, I think we're going to make it easily. You want to know the truth. But how would you like to have a guy that will have four million votes less, that will have maybe four or five or 600 delegates less, and he's going to become your nominee? I don't think it works that way. And I do want to say this. We want to keep everything peaceful. But I hope all of the Trump fans, I just read something coming over here, that the loyalty of the people to Donald Trump, because we're going to make America great again, folks. We're not going to put up with this stuff. The loyalty, the loyalty of the Trump voter is so much greater than anybody else. I mean, people won't leave. There are some people that say under no circumstances. That means like, I don't want to say, because then they'll say he said a harm. But they say he won't, they won't leave. The loyalty is so much stronger than anybody else. Actually, in many, many years, not just against these candidates. You have like Cruz, if he sneezes, they'll leave, okay? Kasich, if he looks in the wrong direction, they'll leave. With me, a woman was on the other day on television. And they said, what will it take for you to vote against Donald Trump? You know, she had the Trump hat, the Trump sticker, and she had 10 of her friends. She was like 50 years old, and I wanted to grab that television and just hug it. And he said, a wise guy, you know, one of the wise guy announcers, add, because they're so disgusting. And he said, he said, the woman, what would it take? She said, stop, stop your question. There is absolutely nothing that man can do that we will vote against him. So stop your question. And then all of her girlfriends, there are like 10 or 12 women standing behind her wearing hats, some red, some white. They're, they're wearing the hats and they're all saying, yes, that's true, that's true, that's true. The loyalty of this group is amazing. And that's one of the reasons they're all talking about it. I got a call from one of the biggest, biggest columnists. I mean, a, an amazing guy. He happens to be liberal, but that's okay every once in a while, right? And he said, how does it feel? And I said, how does what feel? How does it feel to do what you've done? I said, what have I done? He said, there's never been anything done like this in American politics. And I said, you're wrong. If I don't win, I will consider it an entire waste of time, waste of money, waste of energy and effort. Because unless we win, and he said that I was wrong. He said, no, no, no. They'll be talking about your campaign for decades to come. I said, no, no. I said, no. I said, we got to win. I said, we got to win. Because, you know, it's wonderful when they say, hey, we did a good job. Big deal. Unless, unless we get in. And I'm not just talking about primaries. I'm talking about beating crooked Hillary. Unless we get in. Oh, she's as crooked as they come, folks. Just take a look. She's as crooked as they come. I don't care. See, I can say things. I don't care. You know, I don't care. But unless, unless we're going to beat her, I mean, we can't affect the kind of change we're talking about. We can't make it impossible for companies to leave. You know, we can, if there have to be consequences. And when a company goes to Mexico, fires all its people from Maryland, or fires all, like you saw a carrier from Indiana, a great state where we're doing well. They were from Indianapolis, they fired 1,400 people, moved to Mexico, and now they're gonna make air conditions, they're gonna sell them through, no tax, no nothing. So what I would do is I'd say, here's the story, folks. You want to move to Mexico. And, the, the, you know, the politicians, they've been working on this for five years. Number one, a lot of them aren't smart. Number two, the ones that are, are all paid off by people that want them to move because it's to their advantage from a corporate standpoint. Okay? It's to their advantage. But here's what you do. You say very simply, enjoy your trip to Mexico. I hope you build a wonderful plant. Enjoy the heat. And I like the Mexican people. I love them. They have thousands work for me. They're the greatest. They're great. But their leaders are too smart for our leaders. I said, enjoy yourselves because every unit that you make when it crosses the border, which will now be very strong, there will be a 35% tax on that unit. 35. Now, no politician would say that because their special interest groups and their lobbyists will tell them you can't because the lobbyists who get a fortune will be hired for millions of dollars to go see the president and make sure that he shuts up and he doesn't talk about that. Me, I don't care. I'm just, I'm doing the right thing. We have an opportunity to make America, honestly, greater than ever before. Greater, I mean it. I mean it.
I mean it. Greater, greater than ever before. And you know what's going to happen? The carrier folks are going to call up and they're going to say either, Mr. President, we're not moving, we're going to stay in Indiana, or we're going to stay somewhere in the United States, but they'll stay in Indiana. You have a lot of companies that have left for Mexico, a lot. Every single one. If I spoke to those companies, if I were president, and if I would put into gear, what I'm definitely going to put into gear, not one of your companies would have left for Mexico. Now, they may go to a different state. That's different. If they go to a different state, folks, you got to fight for yourself, right? We love our country. But they're going to end up saying they'll stay probably in Maryland. But not one of those companies would leave. Not one. I will tell you, 100% everybody. Because right now they have no consequences. They go to Mexico, they make the product, they sell it to the United States, zero tax, because we have these free traders of which I'm one, but free trade is only good. Remember this, when you have smart people leading you and honest people leading you, and our people mostly aren't smart, and the ones that are, are all taken care of by contributions, folks. So you're really, I mean, you talk about a rigged system. The delegate system is rigged and the whole deal and the whole business climate is rigged. And that's why you lost 40 and 50 percent of your manufacturing jobs here. If I were president and if I could dial it back 10 years, but we'll stop right here because you're losing a lot right now. You know that right now companies are going to leave Maryland and they're going to go to Mexico and other places and we'll stop it. But they have to have consequences. And the politicians, you know, I saw some of their things. It's like a 4,000 page document that was written. They're talking about giving them abatements and giving them this and loaning them low interest loans. All this, you don't need it. Just say this, you move to Mexico, you're gonna pay a tax, okay? You move to Mexico, you pay a tax. You don't need loans. You wanna keep it simple, simple, very simple. China, we have a five, hundred billion dollar trade deficit with china when you try and do business in china it's almost impossible for you to get your product in and when you do you pay a tax whereas they can just send their product here and there's no tax right they have absolutely killed our businesses this is all of them now china is the greatest abuser of all but mexico is really doing a good job i want to tell you they are you look at mexico it's going to become the car capital of the world ford's moving there's so many companies ford's building a two and a half billion dollar plant and after that they just announced a week ago i read in the papers that this was two years ago i've been talking about this for two years but nobody puts pressure on them so now they're going to double down and they're going to make it even larger that should never happen that should never happen so now they're going to make fords they're going to make cars trucks and parts they're going to make them in Mexico in this beautiful new plant, not employing us, but letting go of thousands of people. And they're going to sell the cars over the border. And we're all stupid. And they come in for nothing. Not with me, folks. Believe me. With me, they pay a price. OK. And somebody said, because I'm really, you know, like I'm like a smart guy. A lot of you folks smart. I'm like a smart guy. Let me just tell you. Let me just tell you, folks. So here's their excuse. Well, then your product will cost more. Jeb. Then your product will cost more. Mr. Trump is not a free trader, but he's a gifted politician. Jeb called me a gifted politician. In fact, he said he is a gifted, gifted politician. And I never thought of myself as a politician. I didn't know. That's, I was, my wife said, why did he say such nice things about you? I said, you're going to have to ask him. But he thought I wasn't a conservative. Remember, he is not a conservative. Who cares? I am a conservative, but who cares? I'm a free trader. I like free trade. But you can't have free trade, right? You can't have free trade. You can't do it when your leaders are either paid off or stupid. And that's what we have. So I like free trade, but we can't have it. So here's what happens. So with China, and China's fine. I made a lot of money, which I have the largest bank in the world as a tenant of mine, a building in Manhattan. I do tremendous condo business with China. They buy condos like it's uh, like it's gravy. I have a building in the Bank of America building in San Francisco with a great company. And I have 1290 Avenue of the Americas, one of the biggest office buildings in New York, all through China, all through fighting with China. I fought and fought, worked out to be phenomenal deals. And I know China, we can do great against China. We don't have to do so great. We just have to make it much better. We can't have a $505 billion yearly deficit. 
You talk about it, you can't do it. It, it, it. You almost you say, how does our country survive? This has been going on for years, by the way. We have rebuilt China. What China has done to us, and I'm not angry at China. I'm, I think it's great. Frankly, I wish our leaders had the same brain power as their leaders, okay? I'm not angry at China. I'm angry at our leaders for being so grossly incompetent. They shouldn't even be leaders. I don't even like to use the term. So, so, so we have this massive trade deficit with China and it's gonna end. And yet China, we have rebuilt China. Remember this statement. What China has done to us is the single greatest theft in the history of the world. We have rebuilt China. We have lost millions of jobs. We've lost trillions of dollars. We've rebuilt China. Free trade. That's what free trade is, okay? You know what? Free trade's great, but not when you have the wrong people negotiating. Now go to Mexico for a second. And by the way, what's China doing? They're building a military fortress like you've never seen before in the middle of the South China Sea. Now, they're not supposed to be doing it, folks. They're not supposed to be doing it. What people don't know is we have great leverage because if we ever started imposing tariffs and imposing things and all that stuff that's pouring in, and just remember, and what they're going to say to you is Trump is wrong because your products are going to be more expensive. And they're right. But here's the good news. We're also going to have millions of jobs. So, yeah, the product will be more expensive, maybe a little bit, maybe a lot. We're going to have millions of more jobs. They never say that because we're going to make the product here. We're going to make Apple here. We're not going to make Apple over there. I want to see Apple making its product here. And you know what? If it costs more, but we're employing millions more people, that sort of evens out. And nobody ever talks about that. These people, these dishonest reporters, and I say it to them. I say, remember, remember, because they all say, well, those products will be more expensive. First of all, there's a massive shipping cost. I mean, when you think about the shipping and everything, we have an advantage if we make it here. But they all say, the product will cost more. What they don't say, and I always say it to them, please remember to say that yes, you're right, and yes, to compensate, we're gonna create millions of jobs because we're gonna be making the product for ourselves. They never put the second part. It's unbelievable how dishonest they are. So, so we have a lot of power over all of these countries that view us as the big, dumb bully. You ever see a bully get beat up? It's almost sadder than watch a normal person get beat up. We've seen them all, right? No, you ever see a bully go down? I love to see it, but I don't like it with us. What we are is like the big dumb bully that gets pushed around by everybody. It's not gonna happen anymore. Po folks, I tell you this, Maryland, it's not gonna happen. We're gonna get your jobs back. And very importantly, we're not gonna allow jobs that are currently negotiating to move to Mexico and other places they're going to not move when they talk to me and when they see what I'm going to do, because it won't be economically viable for them to do so. So a couple of things. Well, then you go home, you watch the end of whatever game you want to watch. OK, and I love being with you, folks. I appreciate it to have this kind of a crowd. Look at the size of it. I love being with you. And sadly, sadly, we don't have any protesters. I wish we did, because the only time the cameras show the crowd is if there's a protest or a protest. Otherwise, every time I go home, my wife says to me, oh, how is the crowd, darling? I say, you didn't see it? No, they keep it on your face. She said, it sounds really big. You know, it sounds big. But she said, but you, you don't know. But the good thing about protest, in fact, I'm going to sort of have my own because we don't have protesters so much anymore. Because you know why? We dealt with them properly. They're a bunch of phonies. They don't like coming here anymore. They don't like, it's not friendly territory. But you know what? They had some in New York. I was making a speech and they had some guys outside on Park Avenue and 42nd Street, a building I built, the Grand Hyatt Hotel. So I'm making a speech. I had some protesters and the cameras, the media went up to them and it was pretty good, pretty honest, actually. They said, why are you here? Guy goes, I don't really know. <laughs> and he's got this beautiful sign that was manufactured probably in China. Manufactured, beautiful. 
you know, uh, Trump equals hate. I equal love. Let me tell you, folks, love. Believe me, love. <laughs> including for them. Including for them. We're going to bring jobs back. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to come up with great health care. We're going to save our Second Amendment, which is being chipped away at. We're going to end Common Core and bring education local. I mean, we're like all on the same side. We're all on the same side. It's just, it's like amazing. It's like amazing. So here's the story. I just want to tell you, when I'm debating these characters, they think, oh, I'm nuts. I thought it was a protester. He's a fan. They won't turn to a fan. Isn't there a protester over there someplace so they can show? Look at the size of this place. Back to the corner. It's a big hanger. So anyway, they won't show. They won't show. Don't worry. They keep it. You know, they're like steel. They're like steel. In fact, it took me three. When I started this, we had crowds, big crowds. We had 35,000 in Alabama, 25,000, 20. We are bigger than Bernie, bigger than anybody. They don't like to report it, but that's okay. They all know it's true. But you know what? When I started this, I didn't know. I didn't know. And, and I thought the cameras were like this modern equipment where they couldn't turn them because they never leave. Look at them. They never, ever leave. And then it took two or three rallies. No, no. It's true. No, no. Thank you, folks. It took two or three rallies and I had a protester. I said, oh, that's too bad. All right, get him out. Get him out. And you know what happened? All of us, and the protester was like in a back corner and those cameras were turned around like a pretzel. I never saw anything. I said, oh, they can move. So I realized it. And you know, the protesters have been interesting because the first time I had a protest, he was a rough guy. He was swinging and he had a voice like Pavarotti, okay, a friend of mine. But he had a voice like, the guy was really bad. And you know, he was a tough cookie. And people got a little bit upset to put it mildly, but my people are tough too. But I tell you what, I said, get him out of here. It's true. I said, get him out. All right. And the next day I was excoriated in the press for the temperament. They said, oh, he's so mean. It was so horrible. The guy's punching people, you know. They said, get him out. So they thought it was terrible. So then the following day, I had another big rally. We had some guy stand up and he was screaming. And I said, get him out. Very, don't, please don't hurt him. Don't. And you know what they did the next day in the press? Donald Trump is not that strong a guy. He's become much weaker. You can't win. You can't win. So, okay, so I'm on the, uh, I'm on the stage. And I have all these characters, you know, these politicians that I'm competing against. And again, I'm getting calls from people right now before that you wouldn't believe. People that have said the worst things about me. People that have said such bad things. If my mother were around, she'd be crying, okay? My mother was great. But if my mother were around, she'd be crying to watch. If, if you would hear what they said. And now they're calling, hello, Donald, we'd love to join the campaign. So I... And I actually asked one, I said, you know, I love to have you because believe it or not, I'm a unifier. We're going to re we're going to unify the Republican Party. We're going to unify. We're going to unify. But here's the story. Here's the story. So I get these calls, many calls, especially over the last three, four weeks, especially after New York, actually, because they have that kind. Even my worst enemy in the media said that was a massive victory. Nobody expected that. Right. And it's nice, by the way, when the people that know you best give you that kind of a victory where it's massive, where it's far greater than even the polls showed. Because that means they know you, they like you, they respect you, they think you're good. I mean, I know Maryland and all, but nobody knows me like New Yorkers. And it's really nice when the, even from your standpoint, when the people in New York who know me so well, they know the good, the bad, the ugly, they know everything. When they give you that kind of a massive victory, higher percentage than Hillary, higher per by a lot, higher percentage than everybody, when they give you that kind of a massive victory, it tells you that, you know, it makes you feel good because they know you. Okay. So what happens? So what happens is this. I love you too. I'm on the stage with these guys. And first they come out a couple of months ago. They come out. This is what we had about six or seven left. And I was talking about the wall. And they see me after the event. And you know, they're different after the event. They're all nice, everyone's nice. Then they get on, they start screaming at you. And by the way, I told this guy, I said, how do you say after what you've said about me, just out of curiosity, I love having your support, but how do you say it? Oh, don't worry about that, Don. I'm gonna just say I've changed my mind. That's politics, folks. 
I'm not used to that. You know, I'm a legitimate person. I'm not used to that. But you'll see people coming out soon that were so bad, you won't believe it. So I'm standing on the stage with these people, and one guy comes off and he goes, one of the candidates, he said, Donald, you can't build a wall. I said, of course you can, it's so easy. He said, well, how are you gonna? Then recently, one of them came off and he said, Donald, you know you can't get Mexico to pay for the wall. Who's gonna pay for the wall? 100%, okay? 100%. And I said, let, let me explain something. The Great Wall of China was 13,000 miles long. It was built 2,000 years ago, okay? We need 1,000. It's 2,000, but we have a lot of natural boundaries and borders that are very good, that are almost as good as a wall, right? Maybe we'll build a little longer, actually, take care of a couple of other little spots. And by the way, we're going to let people come into our country. We want people to come in, but we want them to come in legally. You do know that, okay? Legally. Have to come in legally through a process. So this guy, so this guy says, you know you can't get Mexico to pay. So here's the story, because you have a lot of good business people who I know in, the, in this place. So what happens, I say, wait a minute. Here's the story, I'm gonna just give it to you real quick, because you know, I wanna get off the stage. I wanna go and tell everybody how great I did in the debate, the spin room. Trump won the debate, you gotta do that fast. You know, otherwise they'll go in there and say, oh, Trump got clobbered, I say, I thought I won. So, so I'm trying to get to the spin room. You believe everything in politics is sadly, it's so false, it's all spin, it's all crap. But we're gonna change it, folks. We're gonna change it. We're gonna change it. So, so, I said to him, let me just tell you, we have with Mexico a $58 billion a year deficit, right? Trade deficit. So we have $58 billion a year. The wall's gonna cost $10 billion, all right? And that doesn't include the 50, it doesn't include all the drugs that are coming across poisoning our youth, okay? And other people. And that, the wall stops, believe me. And this is a wall that's a hell of a lot higher than the ceiling of this hangar. And when people get up there, if they ever get up, they're not coming down so easy. They're gonna say, man, that is scary. This is a real deal. Now, this is a real wall. I'm a good builder. I build very good buildings, very tall. It's a lot tougher than building walls. So I said to this guy, look, they have a trade deficit right now, a trade deficit of $58 billion. The wall's gonna cost 10. Just so you understand, that's real easy, isn't it? Isn't that, he said, oh, I never thought of it that way. They would never get it. And I saw Vincente Fox, the former president of Mexico. Or you saw him. And he used the F-bomb. Can you imagine if I used the F-bomb? I'd be given the electric chair. He said, we will not pay for the you-know-what wall. He said, we will not pay and then he threw out the F-bomb. The guy threw out the F-bomb. And I said, oh, can you imagine if I ever did that? I would have been, nobody even wrote about it. But they did write about this. He said, we will not pay for the wall. And I said, well, that's good. Because a year ago, he was saying, we will not let a wall be built. So, so far we got the wall. Now it's only a question of getting the money, right? No, no, they'll pay. They'll pay. They'll pay. So folks, we're gonna build up our military. We're going to make it strong. We're going to make it powerful. We're going to make it so strong. And you know, honestly, it's the single cheapest thing we can do, folks, because right now we are big. You look at what Russia is doing and we're going to get along, I think, fine with Russia. As you know, Putin said great things about me. Putin said Trump is a genius. And these candidates wanted me to disavow his statement. I said, why would I disavow that statement? I agree with it, okay? Right. So, I think we're gonna get along with Russia. Hey, wouldn't it be nice if we got along with Russia, okay? Did anybody in here mind when Russia started dropping bombs on ISIS, okay? I mean, we had some senators. We had a senator from, as you know, Lindsey Graham, who's really a nice guy. But we went to South Carolina, and I was at 48% and he was at two and he's the sitting senator. So you can see he's angry and he keeps endorsing people. He endorsed this one, this one, this one, this one. Every time he endorsed somebody, they went out. He endorsed Bush. I said, he's gonna be gone in three days. He was gone in three days. But he was upset that Russia was dropping bombs on ISIS. And I said, that's why we've been fighting this war for 15 years. We shouldn't have been there in the first place. 
We shouldn't have been to Iraq. We destabilized the Middle East. But then we shouldn't have gotten out like Obama got out. We should have left the force. We should have left the force. And you know what? We shouldn't have given them the exact date. How about we are leaving in 14 months and two days? The enemy sat back. I thought maybe it's camouflage. It turned out not to be, right? Because nobody could. Can you imagine George Patton, who's spinning in his grave? General Douglas MacArthur, they're spinning in their grave when they listen. How about the 50 soldiers? Three, four months ago, Obama gets up and he talks about, we are sending 50 of our finest to Iraq and Syria. Now they got a target on their back, folks. Why can't you keep your mouth shut? You know, we need unpredictability. We need unpredictability. And we got to get it. We got to get it. So, so here's the story. So here's the story. We're going to have a great military, and we're going to take out ISIS, and it's going to be gone, and we're going to go back to rebuilding our country. You know, we spent, if you added up, at least $4 trillion in the Middle East. You know, we have nothing. If you go back 15 years ago, if our presidents all went to the beach every single day of the year, we would have been better off than the mess we have right now. We have migration. We're taking in tens of thousands of people. We have no idea where they're from. There's no documentation. There's no anything. And that new omnibus budget that was approved with Democrats and Republicans allows funds for that, funds for illegal immigrants to come in, funds to keep Obamacare because it's bombing all over the place. Okay? So here's the story, folks. You're going to remember this beautiful, hold it, day. We're a little short of evening. You're going to remember this day. Beautiful day. You're going to remember this day. But more importantly, you're going to remember on Tuesday. You're going to go with your people, your friends, everybody you can get. Because we need a big mandate. We need a mandate. And Maryland is it's so important. It's so important. And you're going to look back. And I say this to everybody because it's so true. You're going to look back and you're going to say that was the single greatest vote I ever cast. I cast a vote for Donald Trump. And we will do things fast and we will straighten out the job situation fast. It's going to be America first now, folks. We're not going to be the stupid people anymore. It's America first. America first. And... We're going to beat Hillary Clinton because I will hit her. And don't forget what they said on television today. You know, this guy, everyone said he was just having fun. So he goes in and one by one knocked out a governor, knocked out a senator, knocked out a governor, knocked out a senator. And now there's two guys that are limping. They're limping. They have no way. They're mathematically out. The only thing they can hope. The only thing they can hope is we don't get it on first ballot. And they bought all these things with all their trips and all their stakes and all their hotel rooms. But you're going to have, I'll tell you what, if a guy that is losing by all those millions of votes wins, I'll tell you what, we're going to have some people that are going to be very, very angry. Really. They're going to be very angry. And I hope, but only in a positive way, I hope that all of you and everybody, everybody that's listening, look at all the televisions going. I hope that everybody that's listening can go in July, can go to Cleveland, because we're going to have something that's going to be so beautiful. But you have to play the game fair. It's a rigged system. You know, the fighters say, you know what the fighters say, when they get brought into a wrong territory. So you have a champ from Maryland, but he gets brought into a different state and he's fighting somebody that's good. And I'll say, hey, champ, why are you doing that? Because he got more money. I said, yeah, but the judges are going to be against you, just like this system is rigged. He goes, Mr. Trump, let me tell you, the judges can't help if I knock that guy on his ass if I knock him out. Okay? They can't help. All right? They can't help. So we're like fighters. We're like fighters. Right? Is that true? They can't, they can't help the guy lying on his back unconscious. They can't help those unconscious guys. I've seen it a hundred times. They want to get that little extra money so they go into unfriendly territory and all they want to do is knock them out. Let me just tell you. So you're going to go, you're going to vote. You're going to say it was the greatest vote you ever cast. And here's what's going to happen. We're going to beat Hillary. And from the time, from the time I, and we're going to hit her hard. 
Again, just like I took out all of these people, we're going to take out Hillary. She's easier than some of the people. I mean, she's easier to beat than many of the people that we have systematically beat. But we haven't focused on her yet, okay? We haven't focused. So here's the story. We're going to win. And we're going to start winning from the time we take office. We, we, all of us. From the time we take office, we're going to start winning again. We're going to win with our military. We're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. We're going to win for our vets. We're going to win for our vets because our vets are great people and they haven't been properly taken care of. We're going to win on the border. We're going to win with education. We're going to get rid of Common Core. We're going to win on health care. We're going to build the wall. We're going to win at the border. We're going to have people come in legally only. And we're going to win with trade. We're going to have our jobs coming back. And no other jobs are leaving Maryland or any place else, folks. So I just want to thank you. Get out and vote. And I promise.